dry land. At one time, there were 10 million acres of those semi-arid hills and plains in southern Alberta. In 1946, the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration, which is a branch of the Canada Department of Agriculture, started to reclaim part of that land. This is Julian Biggs speaking from the St. Mary's Dam Project just south of Lethbridge in Alberta. This dam was started in 1946 and was completed in 1951. This dam, which is half a mile long and built entirely of earth and stone, stores enough water to service 235,000 acres of arid land. The lake itself is 18 miles in length and 175 feet deep. Of course, building the dam and storing the water is only part of the solution to the problem. This water has to be delivered to the farmers who can use it, and they're many miles distant from this dam. In fact, the waters from this dam are led through a series of winding canals 230 miles all the way to Medicine Hat. They uh, start their long journey just around the corner from the sluiceway here in what is called the irrigation tunnel. As the tunnel outlet gates are opened, the water spills out into the main irrigation canal. Along these main canals are a series of falls called drops. These gradually bring the water down to lower levels. The change in level, for instance, between St. Mary's Dam and Medicine Hat is 1,300 feet. That's eight times the height of Niagara Falls. Occasionally, where there is a deep ravine to cross, the water is led into the mouths of two great wooden tubes called an inverted siphon. The pressure of the water rushing down these tubes carries it up to rejoin the canal on the other side of the gully with a loss in height of only three feet. At intervals, smaller branch canals are fed by leading the water off through sluice gates. The man who operates the sluice gates is called a ditch rider, and he governs the flow of water down into the smaller canals which lead into the farming districts. From these smaller canals, the farmers can draw off the water as they need it. It's up to the farmers to maintain the ditches on their own property and see that the water gets to their crop. To do this, they just dig a furrow down through the field they want to irrigate, stick in a little canvas portable dam, then knock a hole in the wall of the ditch and let the water off into the crops. One of the men who buys water from this project is Mr. Steve Holden. Mr. Holden, how long have you been in this area? 25 years, Julian. What was it like around here before you had all this water to play with? Well, I, uh, it was a little rugged. Uh, some years we had plenty of water, uh, according to the rise and fall of the river. And other years we didn't have hardly any, and we couldn't farm with any degree of certainty. Uh, how many acres would you be irrigating on this? Oh, uh, I have a water right for 850 acres. 850. But 850 acres, but I usually water about half that amount during the crop season every year. Do you mind me asking what you have to pay for that water? A dollar an acre. Is our, an, is our annual water rental for all we can use. That's for all the water that they, uh, that we can get down the supply ditches from the canal. How is that for a rate, high or low? Oh, that's fairly low. Well, how do you know when you got enough water on those beets? Oh, we usually tell from experience, say, uh, when we're wading through there and sinking up to the ankles and sometimes a little further, we know we have plenty of water on there. Your rule of thumb, eh? Or rule of ankle, right? That's right, rule of ankle. <laughs> Well, good luck with it anyway. Yeah, well, thanks, Julian. That's Thank you fine. very much. This is Julian Biggs speaking from southern Alberta, where we've been visiting the St. Mary's River Irrigation Project.